You have explored the Internet with Google to locate government documents, and now you will continue to use your research skills to locate organization websites. First, consider why an organization would have a website. The most obvious reason is that they want to promote their organization. They try to gather support for their organization, whether it is financial, political, social, or some other type of support and they want to bring an awareness to others about their cause, and not just verbally, but in rallying support for the issues of concern for the organization. Many organizations are nonprofit, which means that they have to do some serious fundraising to stay alive. There are two main types of organizations. Professional organizations are developed by members of a profession that are practicing in that field or discipline, and their cause is usually to improve their services and practices for their clients and patrons. Most professionals are encouraged to share their research and work experiences with others in the profession. Many professional organizations have conferences, journals, and newsletters to provide a venue for sharing ideas and networking with their colleagues. Advocacy organizations are usually founded with a small group of people that deeply care about an issue and grow as they arouse interest in that issue. Concerns are shared to gather support and quite often with publications, including websites, they focus on the emotional aspects of their cause. Many graphics and personal stories develop a sense of empathy for those affected by the issue. Let's compare a website from a professional organization and an advocacy organization. First, notice that on both websites there is an About Us link to information about the organization. The professional website says something about supporting professionals working in the field and preparing them to better serve clients, and it provides access to materials and conferences to do that. The advocacy organization states their purpose is to support parents of college students providing ideas and emotional support so parents can facilitate their sons and daughters in their academic success and graduation. This week, you are going to locate two .org websites. One will be from a professional organization. The other will be from an advocacy organization. Both will have information on your topic. First, let's talk about the professional organization website. Do a search on your topic, but this time, make sure you include the name of the profession you want to focus on. For my topic, I added end library or L-I-B-R-A-R asterisk in the search, which will search for librarians and libraries at the same time. Also, I don't know if you noticed last week, but when you use the advanced search option, your search statement included site colon dot gov to limit it to the dot gov websites. This time, you can continue to use the advanced search or simply add site colon dot org to limit your results to organization websites. When you find a website, before you start to assess it, make sure it is from a professional organization by clicking on the About Us tab. You may need to click on a few links to get to the material for your topic. There are sometimes index pages that list resources available. The second .org source will be from an advocacy organization. You might need to include a search term for the group that would be concerned about your topic or make other adjustments to your search statement. Again, make sure the organization's purpose is to advocate for the issue and make sure there is enough content on the website to use it as a source for your research. Then provide the citation, search statement, score assessment, and relevance comment like you have on your previous assignments. I have found websites to be very difficult to build citations, so here's some hints. First, most of your organization websites are going to have the name of the organization as the author. This is called a corporate author, and the CSE style asks for the word internet in square brackets after the home page name of the source. 
both APA and CSE need a period to end the author statement. After the organization name which is the author, APA wants the date in parentheses, but for both CSE and APA you put the year, month, and date, closing the date statement with a period. The title is next. Make sure you only capitalize the first word and proper nouns in both the title and the subtitle. APA wants the title in italics, but CSE doesn't use italics at all. CSE asks for the date accessed in square brackets. APA requires the terms retrieved from and the name of the home page if it is not the same as the author, and then the URL. CSE requires the terms available from colon and then the URL. For both styles, don't include any punctuation after the URL. That changes the URL and it will not work. Remember the same criteria you have used all semester to assess sources applies to websites as well as articles and books. However, with websites you need to make some judgments about the audience. It may not be clear who the intended audience is. Look for where and how they acquired the information, searching for the type of study if it's a primary source. If the organization is a professional organization, you should be able to verify that the material is from the governing members and therefore is a professional source. Some websites try to hide the date of the information and it is more difficult to assess the currency. Still, if you don't have a date on the information, you don't have it, and so it would be a zero. As always, if you have any questions or want my assistance, please contact me.